Chapter 23 Emma Liberty Weathering Heights Original Edition The rainy night had ushered in a misty morning, half frost, half drizzle and temporary brooks. Crossed our path, gurgling from the uplands. My feet were thoroughly wetted, I was cross and low, exactly the humor suited for making the most of these disagreeable things. We entered the farmhouse by the kitchen way, too. Ascertain whether Mr. Heathcliff were real I absent, because I put slight faith in his own. Affirmation. Joseph seemed sitting in a sort of Elysium, alone, beside a roaring fire, a quart of ale on the table near him, bristling with large pieces of toasted O8 cake, and his black, short pipe in his mouth. Catherine ran to the hearth to warm herself. I asked if the master was in. My question remained so long unanswered that I thought the old man had grown deaf and repeated it louder. Nigh, he snarled, or rather screamed through his nose. Nigh, yama goa back hor ya kum frau. Joseph, cried a peevish voice, simultaneously with me, from the inner room. How often am I to call you? There are only a few red ashes now. Joseph, come this moment, vigorous puffs, and a resolute stare into the grate declared he had no ear for this appeal. The housekeeper and Harriton were invisible. One gone on an errand, and the other at his work, probably. We knew Linton's tones, and entered. Oh, I hope you'll die in a garret. Starve to death, said the boy, mistaking our approach for that of his negligent attendant. He stopped, on observing his error. His cousin flew to him. Is that you, Miss Linton? He said, raising his head from the arm of the great chair in which he reclined. No, don't kiss me. It takes my breath. Dear me, Papa said you would call, continued he, after recovering a little from Catherine's embrace, while she stood by liking very contrite. Will you shut the door, if you please? You left it open, and those, those detestable creatures won't bring coals to the fire. It's so cold. I stirred up the cinders and fetched a scuttleful myself. The invalid complained of being covered with ashes, but he had a tiresome cough and looked feverish and ill, so I did not rebuke his temper. Well, Linton, murmured Catherine, when his corrugated brow relaxed, are you glad to see me? Can I do you any good? Why didn't you come before? He asked. You should have come, instead of writing. It tired me dreadfully, writing those long letters. I'd far rather have talked to you. Now, I can neither bear to talk nor anything else. I wonder where Zilla is. Will you looking at me step into the kitchen and see? And I'm obliged to come down here. They resolved never to hear me upstairs. Is your father attentive to you, Master Heathcliff? I asked, perceiving Catherine to be checked in her friendly advances. Attentive? He makes them a little more attentive at least. He cried, the wretches, do you know, Miss Linton? That brood Harriton laughs at me. I hate him, indeed. I hate them all. They are odious beings. Kathy began searching for some water. She lighted on a pitcher in the dresser, filled a tumbler, and brought it. He bit her at a spoonful of wine from a bottle on the table, and having swallowed a small portion, appeared more tranquil, and said she was very kind, and said you despise me, and if he had been in my place, he would be more the master of the Grange than your father, by this time, but you don't despise me, do you, miss? I wish she would say Catherine, or Cathy, interrupted my young lady, despise you, no, next to Papa and Ellen, I love you better than anybody living. I don't love Mr. Heathcliff, though, and I dare not come when he returns, will he stay away many days? Yes, said Catherine stroking his long soft hair if i could only get papa's consent i'd spend half my time with you pretty linden i wish you were my brother and then you would like me as well as your father observed he more cheerfully but papa says you would love me better than him all the world if you were my wife so i'd rather you were that no i should never love anybody better than papa she returned gravely and people hate their wives sometimes I endeavored to stop her thoughtless tongue. I couldn't succeed till everything she knew was out. Master Heathcliff, much irritated, asserted her relation was false. Papa told me, and Papa does not tell falsehoods, she answered pertly. Nigh Papa scorns yours, cried Linton. 
He calls him a sneaking fool. Yours is a wicked man, retorted Catherine, and you are very naughty to dare to repeat what he says. He must be wicked to have made Aunt Isabella leave him as she did. She didn't leave him, said the boy. You shan't contradict me. She did, cried my young lady. Well, I'll tell you something, said Linton. Your mother hated your father. Now then. Oh, exclaimed Catherine, too enraged to continue. And she loved mine, added he. You little liar, I hate you now, she panted, and her face grew red with passion. She did, she did, sang Linton, sinking into the recess of his chair, and leaning back his head to enjoy the agitation of the other disputant, who stood behind. Hush, Master Heathcliff, I said. That's your father's tale, too, I suppose. It isn't, you hold your tongue, he answered. She did, she did, Catherine, she did, she did, Cathy beside herself, gave the chair a violent push, and caused him to fall against one arm. He was immediately seized by a suffocating cough that soon ended his triumph. It lasted so long that it frightened even me, as to his cousin. She wept, with all her might, aghast at the mischief she had done, though she said nothing. I held him till the fit exhausted itself. Then he thrust me away, and leaned his head down silently. Catherine quelled her lamentations also took a seat opposite, and looked solemnly into the fire. How do you feel now, Master Heathcliff? I inquired, after waiting ten minutes. I wish she felt as I do, he replied. Spiteful, cruel thing. Hariton never touches me. He never struck me in his life. And I was better today. And there, his voice died in a whimper. I didn't strike you, muttered Cathy, chewing her lip to prevent another burst of emotion. He sighed and moaned like one under great suffering, and kept it up for a quarter of an hour, on purpose to distress his cousin apparently. For whenever he caught a stifled sob from her he put renewed pain and pathos into the inflections of his voice. I'm sorry I hurt you, Linton, she said at length, racked beyond endurance, but I couldn't have been hurt by that little push, and I had no idea that you could, either. You're not much, are you? Linton? Don't let me go home thinking I've done you harm. Answer, speak to me. I can't speak to you, he murmured. You've hurt me so, that I shall lie awake all night choking with this cough. If you had it you'd know what it was, but you'll be comfortably asleep while I'm in agony, and nobody near me. I wonder how you would like to pass those fearful nights. And he began to wail aloud, for very pity of himself. Since you are in the habit of passing dreadful nights, I said, it won't be miss who spoils your ease. You'd be the same had she never come, however. She shall not disturb you again. And perhaps you'll get quieter when we leave you. Must I go? Asked Catherine dolefully, bending over him. Do you want me to go, Linton? You can't alter what you've done. He replied pettishly, shrinking from her. Unless you alter it for the worse by teasing me into a fever. Well, then, I must go, she repeated. Let me alone, at least said he, I can't bear your talking. She lingered, and resisted my persuasions to departure a tiresome while, but as he neither looked up nor spoke, she finally made a movement to the door, and I followed. We were recalled by a scream. Linton had slid from his seat onto the hearthstone, and lay, writhing in the mere perverseness of an indulged plague of a child, determined to be as grievous and harassing as it can. I thoroughly gauged his disposition from his behavior, and saw at once it would be folly to attempt humoring him. She tried to put it more comfortably. I can't do with that, he said. It's not high enough. Catherine brought another to lay above it. That's too high, murmured the provoking thing. How must I range it? Then, she asked despairingly. He twined himself up to her, as she half knelt by the settle, and converted her shoulder into a support. No, that won't do. I said, you'll be content with the cushion, Master Heathcliff. Miss has wasted too much time on you already. We cannot remain five minutes longer. Yes, yes, we can, replied Cathy. He's good and patient now. He's beginning to think I shall have far greater misery than he will tonight, if I believe he is the worse for my visit. And then I dare not come again. Tell the truth about it. Linden, for I mustn't come, if I have hurt you. You must come. To cure me, he answered. You ought to come, because you have hurt me. 
You know you have extremely. I was not as ill when you entered as I am at present. Was I, but you've made yourself ill by crying and being in a passion. I didn't do it at all, said his cousin, however. We'll be friends. Now, and do you want me? You would wish to see me sometimes, really. I told you I did. He replied impatiently. Sit on the settle and let me lean on your knee. That's as mama used to do. Whole afternoons together. Sit quite still and don't talk. But you may sing a song, if you can sing. Or you may say a nice long interesting ballad. One of those you promised to teach me. Or a story. I'd rather have a ballad. Though, begin. Catherine repeated the longest she could remember. The employment pleased both mightily. Linton would have another. And after that another. Notwithstanding my strenuous objections. And so they went on until the clock struck twelve. And we heard Harriton in the court. Returning for his dinner. And tomorrow, Catherine. Will you be here tomorrow? Asked young Heathcliff. Holding her frock as she rose reluctantly. Oh, I'll take good care. I continued. I'll have that lock mended. And you can escape by no way else. I can get over the wall. She said. Laughing. The Grange is not a prison, Ellen. And you are not my jailer. And besides, I'm almost 17. I'm a woman. And I'm certain Linton would recover quickly if he had me to look after him. I'm older than he is. You know, and wiser, less childish. Am I not? And he'll soon do as I direct him. With some slight coaxing. He's a pretty little darling when he's good. I'd make such a pet of him if he were mine. We should never quarrel. Should we, after we were used to each other? Don't you like him, Ellen? Like him, I exclaimed, the worst-tempered bit of a sickly slip that ever struggled into its teens. Happily, as Mr. Heathcliff conjectured, he'll not win twenty. I doubt whether he'll see spring. Indeed. And small loss to his family whenever he drops off. And lucky it is for us that his father took him. The kinder he was treated, the more tedious and selfish he'd be. I'm glad you have no chance of having him for a husband, Miss Catherine. My companion waxed serious at hearing this speech. To speak of his death so regardlessly, wounded her feelings. You say Papa will get better. And why shouldn't he? Well, well, I cried. After all, we needn't trouble ourselves. For listen, Miss, and mind, I'll keep my word. If you attempt going to Wuthering Heights again, with or without me, I shall inform Mr. Linton, and, unless he allow it, the intimacy with your cousin must not be revived. It has been revived, muttered Cathy sulkily. Must not be continued. Then, I said, we'll see, was her reply, and she set off at a gallop, leaving me to toil in the rear. On the succeeding morning, I was laid up, and during three weeks I remained incapacitated for attending to my duties, a calamity never experienced prior to that period and never, I am thankful to say, since. No amusement usurped a minute. She neglected her meals, her studies, and her play, and she was the fondest nurse that ever watched. She must have had a warm heart, when she loved her father so, to give so much to me, I said her days were divided between us. But the master retired early, and I generally needed nothing after six o'clock. Thus the evening was her own. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.